Thank you very much for attending the local outbreak engagement board. Um, can I just say uh, we've had apologies from Laura Gordian, who is taking a very much well-earned rest. Um, and we've had apologies from uh, Councillor Debbie Andre, who is unable to attend because she's in actually trying to manage two meetings and this would have been her third. Um, so uh, can I just say for the record that Jane Ansell um, is on the screen and we have uh, Councillor Carl Love, we have Amina and we have Wendy Pereira. Um, I'm, I say that for the record so that people, because obviously it's very difficult for us, you're behind, you're behind us. So thank you very much. Um, I can't go through the minutes because we're not core it today um, in person, um, but I will invite people to do any declarations of interest should they have them. No indications. We have public question times of 15 minutes. Uh, did we receive any public questions? We've received none. Did you want to ask any public questions? No, we have our reporter here, but she's a member of the public too. So, um, uh, yeah, welcome. I should say we've got a, a fabulous reporter here. So we move on to item number four of the agenda, which is the reports of the engagement board. So um, I think, Simon, you're up first, which is the Isle of Wight public health data. Thank you. Many thanks, Chair. So, uh, colleagues, what we have on the Isle of Wight with particularly rates to COVID is we are seeing increasing rates of COVID um, in across the board, mainly focused on that younger age group, so the um, uh, school age population, uh, and uh, highest rate in the five to nineteen year five to nine year olds. So we're just seeing that kind of come down. Uh, working with schools uh, and that's as those kind of children connect and obviously they're not vaccinated we are seeing that um, increase we did see a decrease at half term but that's going up again what we are seeing is a slight decline in the over 60s rate which is really positive uh, I think we can say this is very well connected to the booster vaccine so as more people get the booster we're seeing that rate come down which is really positive we're not seeing uh, any particular changes in our rate of Testing, perhaps a slight increase since we've heard of the new variant. Uh, but again, so it's not about changing testing, it's about the uh, the way the infection is spreading. Hospitalizations remain fairly steady, perhaps a small dip, as I mentioned, with the over 60s rate coming down. And finally, we have uh, can you a small number of uh, people dying from COVID, uh, which again is always very sad, but kind of very minimal numbers. I don't think I'll go into much more detail about the, the data, and I know Jane will talk about vaccine update. I think it's really important this board understands the change since we last met about the new variant Omicron. So let me give you a little bit of information about that. We have 29 cases nationally, that's nationally, and no cases uh, locally. We are, uh, why are we concerned? So the protein spike is different from the other protein spikes. So it's a new variant. So we're not quite sure at this stage, because it's new, how it will react to the vaccine, how it causes, if it causes more severe disease or how it spreads. The initial signs are that it is okay, but we want to be very cautious about this. Uh, we being nationally, so we do a lot of work uh, should we have a case. And we've seen other areas of the country doing very, very, targeted testing around those cases. As a result of Omicron, we've seen change in guidance. So we're seeing face coverings now mandated in shops and on public transport. And we're seeing a change to the contact tracing. So what we're seeing is a case of, if you're a contact of an Omicron case, you need to isolate irrespective of your vaccination status, which is different from other cases. So that's really important. Um, and we will get that message out. People will be contacted by our contact tracing service and informed of that. So it's not something someone needs to know. They'll be told very clearly what the action is they need to take. Uh, we're working very closely with UK HSA, the national agency, uh, on that. Uh, alongside the kind of uh, that guidance, we've seen a slight change to school guidance around increased face coverings in communal <sighs> settings in schools. Nita, I'll, I'll stop there on that side of things, uh, but happy to take any questions on the data or Omicron. Okay, so do we have any questions on the data or the Omicron vote virus? No? Okay, I think that's very important about the um, isolation and that there's no exemptions. I think that'd be really good if you can get that out there. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Leader. Simon, I was just going to ask if you could say a little bit more about the work that's been done to identify Omicron, because it's slightly different to previous variants where they were sequencing, they were randomly sequencing um, tests, weren't they? This is a bit different to that. So there's a number of um, ways that um, COVID v uh, viruses are um, tested, uh, and the Omicron uh, variant has something called the S gene target failure. So the tests look for that, but that's kind of screen and then do some more detailed analysis of that, uh, particularly obviously concerned of people coming from countries which are on the red list. So it's kind of a, a staged approach to do that. Um, so you end up with possible cases, probable cases and confirmed cases. So that S gene failure is really important because the Delta variant doesn't have that failure. Sorry, it's a quite a genetic term, but it's really important to understand how that works. Uh, and we're looking at that and working obviously with uh, UK HSA to understand that. Look. I think the point is though that, that they can detect it through the PCR test and it hasn't got to go for a further test. So correct. That's yes, sorry. Right. Thank yeah. people to understand. Thanks. Okay, so um, is there a, who's doing the update on the communications activity? Is that you, Wendy? Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and, and my apologies, I'm not there with you. Um, I think I'll just give you a general outline of what our approach to comms is going to be for the winter and as we move in towards the Christmas time. And the campaign is really all about getting back to basics, about remembering those behaviours of hands, face, space, which we can all do to help keep ourselves safe and continue to protect the island. I think it's really important because now that we are and can go out and about our daily lives more normally, um, going to work, socialising, seeing family members and friends, I, you know, we feel as though we're in a very different world than we were this time last year, and, and we are. But we also know that we do have high case numbers and we face the challenges of variants, as, as um, Dr Bryan has just explained. So as well as some of the other things that we're aware of in terms of vaccination and LFT testing, and we'll hear more about vaccinations in a minute, there are still some very simple behaviours that we can all do to help prevent spread the virus. And those are regular hand washing, thinking about keeping our distance and wearing face coverings, particularly in crowded areas. And we know the new regulations have come into place, but we can all personally make a decision about when we do and when we don't wear face coverings. Um, I think it's really important to also think how much those three simple things also protect us against flu viruses and other winter bugs and sickness viruses. So it does more than just potentially protect us against COVID. And the more we can do those really simple measures, the likely it is that we will continue to remain healthy and we all need to stay healthy, not just to protect our NHS, but so that we can continue with our own lives and, and enjoy Christmas and enjoy the new year and, and move into um, hopefully a kind of lovely spring on the Isle of Wight. Um, we want everyone to be as healthy as possible through this winter and to protect ourselves and our fam families and friends. The messages about basic behaviours, we're going to supplement with messages about taking regular lateral flow tests, taking up the vaccination and, of course, um, communicating any changes that are announced by government, as we've seen over the last few days. And those will be shared across all media, so print media, digital media, um, radio and anything else that we can use. We have an, uh, an Isle of Wight Council newsletter, e-newsletter, which goes out weekly as well, that members of the public can sign up to, to receive information. I think in addition to those uh, sort of more traditional routes of communication, I think it's probably important for the um, board this morning to understand what our regulatory services teams have also been working on and supporting community and business with. So over the last few weeks, they have been promoting lateral flow testing initially at supermarkets where the support officers handed out something in the region of eight and a half thousand lateral flow test kits to customers. And they're now looking at supporting other businesses in the retail and hospitality and security services sector. So SIA at door staff for um, pubs and uh, hospitality sector. 
and we're starting to focus on that approach as a whole island and also looking at how we can do something with youth groups in that in that realm as well. They deliver the test and trace letters that the local test and trace partnership need to send out to people to advise them of the need to self isolate and what support is available and what they have to do. They're very closely working with the police around compliance on the island and I think we remember back to the lockdown periods and compliance on the island was really, really good. You know, businesses want to do the right thing to maintain their customers and to make customers feel comfortable and um, happy to be able to use their services. And we're already getting feedback that many of the retailers have implemented and have and the guidelines that have just been put in place and meet and greet people with face cut wearing their own face coverings but also have face coverings available for those that have forgotten them so once again you know as well as our community putting on um doing what they can to support the local community the business sector is also doing that as well and then finally the team are looking at the moment to work and contact venues that are hosting parties for the festive season to discuss reviewing risk assessments and looking at this issue of ventilation because i think it will be an issue not just for businesses but for families over christmas uh, it, where we're getting the messages about hands face space and ventilate for when people are indoors um, it's clear that people are also starting to feel the effect of price rises in fuel um, and as costs are increasing businesses are struggling to match income but households are needing to balance um, the cost of fuel as well so i think the ventilation message for many can be quite a difficult message to hear but we're looking at what we can do um, through working with uh, our partners, uh, citizens advice through our housing services, through our registered provider partners to provide support where we can so that people can still do what they need to do to protect themselves from the spread of viruses over the winter. I think that's it in summary. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, I should think if everybody if everybody listens to all of that advice, um, there should be no doubt at all that we're doing the right thing if we can. Uh, Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Chair. Last weekend, um, I went to West Sussex and I travelled on uh, one of our ferry operators and um, unfortunately, face masks were not being worn. It was an advisory thing that they should wear them. Are we directing a message to our ferry operators? especially at this time of the year with the increase in capacity of those cross-solent uh, uh, transporters. I think that the service there is going to be quite busy this year. Um, so that's one thing. Can we make sure that we do make contact with them? Can we indeed, if, if needs be, offer them lateral flow tests at, at the ports or, or, or something akin to that? Um, we need to make sure that people are testing. So it's all right handing out the kits. It's actually using them. Now, I just feel that you know we we need to we need to spread. If we can do some lateral flow tests out in the public arena, then that might show people that it's not that difficult. It doesn't take up an inordinate amount of time, and uh, it will be better for be better for us as a community and indeed our, our tourist and, and visitor um, uh, services to uh, display that type of care. And can I just say about um, ventilation, ventilation, in, especially in pubs and clubs and places like that is great. Absolutely. They try and obey that. They leave their doors open and open their windows. Directly, the music starts because of the situation with regard to environmental health and indeed the, the noise problems, you know, they close, they close the doors and they close their windows. And that's, and that's part of the problem. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to affect their neighbourhood. Um, and they've been told in the past by our environmental health people that, OK, keep your noise down. So keeping the noise down, unfortunately, means when you're in a pub or a club that's a little bit noisy and a bit, there's a bit of a robust gathering then and, and boisterousness, 
you close the doors and windows. We've got a problem with that. And there should be a little bit of tolerance along the way as well. But, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just passing that out as possible problems, uh, you know, that we, we will encounter over the festive period and the run-up to the festive period. Thank you. Peter, should I answer the first question around the... Uh, I'm sure Wendy probably says it. So, uh, from Tuesday, it was mandated to wear face coverings on public transport, so that would have changed that, and we've been really clear with our messaging, and I know that ferries, trains, etc., are working with that. So, uh, we have seen a change, and I think much more uh, people wearing, and the messages are really clear on the, the transport. Uh, and I'm sure Wendy's point around the ventilation and the, the challenge, the, the uh, way that we're working with businesses uh, illustrates your point, but when you are. Thank you. Who else is going to answer? Wendy, to Wendy and then Carl. I think Simon, Simon said what I was going to say. Thank you, Chair, um, around uh, this. Please. Thank you, uh, Councillor Love. Yes, thank you very much, Wendy, for uh, your report there. Very much appreciate that. Um, um, I took my PCR test this uh, this morning, and um, having just come back from afar, um, I uh, and um, and there was virtually nobody wearing any masks at all on the ferries last night uh, when I came back fairly late. Um, people still seem to be in the um, opinion. That, that you know it's fine to wear a mask till you get on and then as soon as you sit down you take them off i think we just kind of need to perhaps just strengthen that message is that that you know previously people would come in sit down you know to eat a meal etc take the masks off what we're trying to suggest now and as from tuesday as simon has already pointed out masks should be and must be worn as much as possible i guess you know, in actual fact, I think there's been quite some there's been some quite good messaging from Isle of Wight Council. Not only have um, our teams and comms teams been really proactive, is that there's a lot coming from us councillors as well, as well and general population about looking after ourselves and uh, and taking care. I, th I think that message needs to be strengthened though around, you know, wear a mask. Let's go above and beyond is the message that I would like to see go out into the com community, you know, above and beyond safeguard everybody, but particularly a stronger message going out in those immediate three or four days around Christmas um, when people are starting to get onto the ferry, you know, going home for Christmas. You know, maybe asking Isle of Wight Radio to put a little jingle on, you know, that. But what's that song called, you know, going home for Christmas, wear a mask, blah, 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 that sort of that sort of thing. Just to remind people that are coming home to the island from all different locations that, that uh, how important it is. But generally speaking, I have to say that I've been very pleased with with the public health response. Um, there's only so much that we can do, but by by spiking it in those few days before Christmas and spiking it every now and again, keep changing the message around. Um, same message, but different, you know, different different focus. So so thank you to all of the uh, teams, particularly to um, our comms team in the council. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're going to move on now to item number five, which is the vaccination program, please. Um, and I think that's you, Jane. Thank you. You too. Jane, do you want to introduce? Um, so, Jane Ansel thank worked you. very closely with is the uh, program director for the vaccination program, uh, and we've been connecting a lot. But Jane, you've got the information, the data, and we'll work. Uh, we work very close together. Thank you, Simon. It's very kind. Lovely. Thank you. Um, so, slides all prepared. Um, very, very, very timely this morning. So this is the latest data that I can bring you and uh, I focus the um, the presentation on the Isle of Wight specifically for you, but can answer some general questions if they if they come. Um, next slide, please, Amina. So um, at the moment, so these are the sort of headlines on the island. So at, at least 62 percent of the uh, booster vaccines have been delivered to your over 40s on the island already. With the modelling for the over 40s have showed we can offer all the boosters by Christmas. We've, uh, I'll come back to the extra capacity in a minute. Um, the key messages are for pregnant women to get vaccinated. That's really important on the island. We need to keep plugging away at that, unfortunately. Um, I'll just, sorry, Simon, I'll just have to admit you. 
you're right in the middle of the admission button has come straight in the middle of my slides. So, um, sorry, is everyone else seeing that admitting button? Yeah, I've accepted it. I think it's yes, I don't think it's our, we don't normally have control of the meeting. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, so improved communications are sorry so comms are trying to advise people to just to wait and hear from their gps because not all of our vaccine um capacity is walking they are by invitation and the gps are trying to manage that within the capacity they've got so as not to let everybody down and it's really important for us to vaccinate those most vulnerable first for obvious reasons so um but there is enough vaccine and there's certainly enough appointments and um, there certainly will be enough appointments in time before christmas um so we're trying to do improved communication we did have a communication hiccup this week and my apologies for that i know the comms teams have all worked really hard to try and get the comms back on track there were some gaps in comms and um uh, i think it's it was a tremendous change to the program this week uh, by reducing the um, uh, the period between your second vaccine and your booster to three months, that substantially changed what we needed to provide. So it just took us a while to um, to get on top of that. So your roving bus. So we were offered um, uh, a supply of roving um, uh, a roving vaccination facility, and we prioritised the island to to assist um, in the access to vaccines. That started yesterday it was the very first one we'd done and it was extreme commissioning that had to be pulled into play to try and get that bus to you as quickly as possible we delivered more than the said 250 vaccines there were a few hiccups at the beginning of the process um but the team said that your that um that generally your public were really understanding they did explain what was going on and really supportive there was a little bit of anti-vax problem there with it yesterday but when the anti-vaxxers were, were uh, gently escorted away, your uh, your population cheered and uh, and appraised everyone, praised everybody on the bus for holding their nerves. So I thank your population for that, for supporting our services. Um, so we're reviewing the, all of our modelling and just making sure that we've got um, we've got uh, available vaccines to not just our booster cohort, but to all the other cohorts that are required. And I'm going to come on to talk about um, some specific areas in the Isle of Wight in a minute, and also talk about your 12 to 15 year olds that we're also trying to protect. So uh, key messages, obviously just echoing what we've just heard really, just COVID safety, wear masks, wash your hands and keep your distance. So I just need to put that on the bottom of all of my slides. So the next slide, please. So as a programme, as we said, we have to we've had to um, step up capacity. We've um, we've doubled our efforts in terms of uh, communications this week and um, and everything um, and everything we're doing on the programme to report up to national to ensure that um, the services that we're providing on the Hampshire and across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight are well communicated. So this additional capacity is in the form of the roving bus, which will remain on the island for you until Sunday. It will then be stored on the island and it will continue to deliver additional vaccines to the island during next week as well. The exact start date, it might be Tuesday, it might be Wednesday. We're just working on that with the team that have stepped in um, from Solutions to Health to help us run that. We're working with the your primary care network to ensure that their services can be sustained, providing additional support wherever we can to increase and, pro and then protect those services. Um, around the um so for anybody who's traveling on and off the island obviously there are other places that you can go to get your vaccine as well but for the most part we think we can deliver that um on the island we we are increasing your capacity at the riverside um that's going to double um i think the start date for that we we're aiming for monday it might be tuesday we're just ensuring the workforce as you know workforce is a, a very very difficult um uh, thing to manage just simply because we didn't have the same access to workforce as we would have done at the beginning of the pandemic because people have gone back to their jobs now um and uh, your hospital hub your hospital are helping because they're doing they're offering vaccines to those of immunosuppressed um patients they're offering it to maternity they're also doing their staff etc so um you know a really good offering all round across all of the models the university model apologies that's uh, my mistake i didn't take that out of the slide that's a model in southampton university that they're running this weekend where there are four thousand walk-in appointments over the two days 
Um, so if anybody's over there and, uh, and happens to be in Southampton, that model will be accessible to them. Um, communications I've already touched on. Um, there was, there's a little bit of concern about the visibility of appointments, and that's because the National Booking Service is visible to everybody all across the country, um, whereas your local booking services are just for your, your primary care uh, teams to invite your local population in. And we don't want to be putting those with high visibility because you get everybody booking in from all over the country. We are developing plans now for our five to 11 year olds. And this is a really delicate matter. Five to 11 year olds can't be lined up in school and injected uh, without support from from parents. And uh, so we're really looking hard at that model and we're going to work with you, with um, UK SA, uh, SHA. We're going to work with um, paediatricians on the island and with the existing models that we have in place to make sure it's right for your population. Um, next thing we're doing, we're implementing additional pathways and a support line for those patients who are immunosuppressed. Uh, most of the immunosuppressed community, we think we've contacted 73% of them, but there will be people who are borderline. They're not sure whether they are immunosuppressed or not. So we're opening up a helpline to, um, to allay their fears and direct them in the right way if they do need a fourth dose. Um, housebound is a priority for primary care um, and um, and we're working closely with your primary care leaders um, to ensure that all of your housebound have been um, have been uh, contacted. But if there is a problem, they should contact their GP and find out when their next when their appointment will be. The housebound appointments have taken a little bit longer this time because they're, everyone's having Pfizer and there is the 15 minute observation period. So it's taking a little bit longer to get round than it might have done the first time round with AZ. And um, I'm doing some work at the team and looking into the prison outbreaks um, uh, issue that um, Simon's raised with me this week and we'll be getting a further briefing on that next week. Thank you. Um, now a bit of local data for you. Thank you, Amina. I don't know whether you can you see that OK from your screens. Um, so. Uh, oh, sorry, just put that on my bigger screen. Thank you. So if it's small, James, so you don't have to give highlights. I, I will. I'm sorry, it's small. We can circulate this afterwards if that would help. And then you can have a scrutiny of it. So the first line is central and west and 67 um, percent. Uh, uh, all your care homes have been visited. Um, all your older people care homes have been visited. This number includes learning disability care homes, and we're just starting those now. 67% of people who are eligible, and that includes staff and residents of care homes, have actually been vaccinated with their boosters. They're not all due at the moment. Obviously, not everyone is due. And some of those patients who are due, if they've had a COVID outbreak, um, or indeed they're on end of life and have selected not to have a vaccine, that can be that can alter uptake. But it is available to everybody and um, and uh, GPs will be working hard with your care homes to ensure they get to everybody who is due and can access a vaccine. Uh, sorry, and, and can have the vaccine if they're not being held up by uh, by a COVID outbreak. In the other cohorts, as you can see, uptake is variable. So in cohorts two to five, so these are our older population, they're coming forward very enthusiastically. 82% of those boosters that were eligible have already been done. Still 1,244 as at today who are eligible and haven't come forward yet. Uh, in cohort six, this is a uh, cohort six, so six to 64 year olds, clinically vulnerable patients. That's only a 50% uptake at the moment. There's, as I say, these, these vaccines are available to everybody, but do need people to come forward for them. Cohort seven to 10 on boosters is a lower uptake at 39%. Yep. And, but, you know, we're aiming to do another 2,819 of those. Yeah. As soon as possible. And as I said, Everybody over over the age of 40 needs to have their vaccine, you know, trying to get their vaccine done before before Christmas. But we've got till the 31st of January to do all of these uh, seven to 10 cohorts. Um, and then I just want to talk a little bit about the 12 to 15 year olds. I think I've got that on a second slide on its own, Amina. Oh, sorry. No, hang on. So I'll do the other. I'll do the other areas first. Apologies. I was I'll come back to schools. 
Um, so in the north and west, a uh, slightly improved picture on take up for care homes um, uh, and the two to five year olds. Sorry, so vaccine cohorts two to five. Um, again, a difficulty in, in cohort six. Um, we'll be looking at that closely with your commissioners and uh, because that's only a 44 percent uptake and a lower uptake on the seven to tens because that's only 30 percent. There's 3,800 people in that cohort who are still yet to have their vaccine. And this say this does include yesterday's figures. So um, still a way to go. And I'll switch just to the South, um, South Island. So 71% of those in care homes have had only 160 people at the moment outstanding in that group. Um, so that's that's very encouraging. There's made some great progress in there. 71% um, in two to fives, 39% in cohort six, that vulnerable cohort, and 30% in seven to tens with a two and a half thousand people due. So you can see that as we look at seven to tens and we look at, at cohort six, and two to five. There are a lot of people on the island who still need their vaccine. And this is why the bus was deployed to you ahead of, you know, in a, in a in very short order to ensure that we increase the visibility of those appointments and also the and hopefully the uptake. And um, the, the capacity on the island um, was 17 additional 1750 vaccines this weekend alone. And we'll continue that next weekend. Um, Carl, you did have a question for me. Would you like me to take that now? At the end? OK, thank you. Let's go on to the 12 to 15 year olds. Thank you, Amina. So as you can see, the, the uh, these are the general figures for the update uh, update on 12 to 15 year olds. Um, we've, been, we've been to all the schools that would have us in. We did have one or two issues with access to some small independent schools. Um, but not anything that would have distorted the overall figure and the number. So let's look specifically at the Isle of Wight, please. Amina, next slide. Thank you. Could you, you can't blow that up, can you, on there? Sorry, that's not very helpful. Uh, let me go to the detail. OK, so um, the position at the moment on the first doses of 12 to 15 years as the island as and the island of a, as a whole is is really is under 50 percent and we're really concerned about this 12 to 15 year olds are now being called for their second boost their second doses which will commence on the 10th of january and it'll commence in the order that we started the school so it might not commence on the island on the 10th it might be the 12th or the 15th it depends on the the arrangements that we're making with the school but it's in that order of magnitude in the middle of january but we've still only done half of the children on the island for their first doses and that is a concern so again we have to work on comms and try and improve access to vaccinations for our 12 to 15 year olds and encourage more uptake in schools and so we welcome any feedback that you have on that. And we are working closely with comms teams, closely with, with our public health colleagues um, to, to try and ensure that we target um, this particular area. So um, I'd like to stop there. If you take the slides down, Amina, for me, thank you. And I will take any questions. Did you could I just make a point before I take questions? Yeah, um, um, I'm just going to bring in uh, Simon and then I'll bring in Councillor Love. Simon? Uh, just, uh, Jane, a point of clarity. The, uh, you're absolutely right. We're thinking about the 5 to 11 year olds, but we are waiting for the JCVI guidance on that. So it's not about rolling out, it's about being prepared should that come forward. So just be really clear about that. It's not something we are doing at this point. No, absolutely, Simon. I, I apologise. My agenda is running very fast this morning, um, but we are starting the planning because I think because of five to 11 year olds, everyone is very concerned that we get this right. So we have luckily been given at least a few weeks to plan the five to 11 year olds. JCVI guidance is anticipated before Christmas. So we were informed yesterday. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Love. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Jan, um, for, for your presentation. Um, we, we can actually see the detail quite well on screen, just so oh, that, just so you know. Um, 
But yeah, it is really concerning about um, young people's uh, uh, not taking up the vaccines. It's uh, 12 to 15, I think you said that was. Yes. Um, so, I mean, um, uh, definitely if, um, if I can ask Wendy, if she can just um, perhaps do something special on that, perhaps we perhaps we need to do something special in, um, uh, over the weekend to push that message out in a, in a big way. Um, I know that we're doing lots already, but if anything that we can do to do that, what what did concern me is, and I haven't picked this up, is, is I think you've said that, you know, we had some anti-vaxxers at, at our... Yes, yes, uh, Was that did. yesterday? It I mean, was yesterday. I, I find that absolutely irresponsible and completely unacceptable that... The, um, it's one thing to be an anti-vaxxer in your own right, you know, I don't want, want vaccinating because, but to go out there and potentially stand in front of a bus and intimidate other people who are potentially there trying to dissuade them from is just not acceptable when we definitely know that herd immun immunisation works. It works. We can see it works. People are not dying, you know, not passing out. Life is being saved. And I just cannot understand why people would want to go out there and, you know, uh, and, and, do, and disrupt something like that where there are people who may feel vulnerable. And I just wanted to communicate that, that, that I just do not understand that, that, that particular argument. Um, and um, so the message is clearly is, 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 is please, you know, carry on getting your vaccinations. It works. It definitely works. It saves lives. And I'm, I'm pretty dismayed that people would go and stand in. For, for what purpose does that serve? Um, you know, so, 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 so I would ask those, you know, I understand you, why some people would not want to have the vaccine. I understand some, but for people to then go and try to dissuade others who clearly need those vaccinations, that's just not acceptable. Okay, can I bring in um, Wendy, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, and, and certainly the team can look at working with the schools and um, NHS and CCG comms on putting some more messaging out. Um, I think it, I think there are two points for me, really. One is I think we need to remember back to the period just before um, the last uh, school break when we were seeing relatively um, high numbers of COVID cases in that age group. And of course, you can't have your first booster if you have COVID. So I think what we have is, is an impact from experiencing COVID cases in that age group in schools, as well as um, needing, to take, uh, needing to improve the take up. I don't think it's simply um, a kind of lack of take up for people not wanting to do it. Um, but certainly we'll look at what we can do to enhance the work that the CCG and the NH do directly with schools to make sure the message gets out there. Thank you, Jane. Did, oh, sorry, Simon and then Jane. Right, Wendy's made um, Simon's point. You're talking for each other today. Um, uh, Jane, would you like to come in? Thank you, I would. Yes, when, yes, Wendy is right. And it's exactly the same as in some other cohorts where people aren't coming forward and they can't come forward at the moment. We're working really closely with education on this. Absolutely can assure you we work hand in glove. We're briefing them regularly um, and um, and getting together with them to see what, you know, what else we can do. I can absolutely assure you that for any when we come back into the schools to do the second doses, we will be offering first doses as well. So you know, we will make the best use we can of the teams on the ground in the schools at every opportunity. Yeah, uh, now John wants to ask a question. So Jane, thanks so much for the presentation and thanks for the work that you did around the bus. I think that's really helpful in terms of getting the message out there. I suppose the question for me is people who have come up to their six months now since they had their second dose. And I know things have changed. Re re have changed but people who've come up to the end of that six month period are probably expecting phone calls from gps or others to call them what what advice do we give if they've not had that call or when would they expect that call because I, I think you're right i know gps have got to get on and do their the most vulnerable but 
people who are at six months are, are a little bit, what do I do next? Do I wait for a call? Do I call? Could you give some advice on that? I can. I will just ask for some patience, the other kind of patience. Um, the GPs are doing are doing their best, and they really want to get to all of the to all of the population. They absolutely do. They do know that, and of course, these people who are anybody who's more than three months is now entitled to have their vaccine. That was an overnight decision, and we didn't see it coming. Uh, we would been told possibly five months. So we so we would obviously have been on the back foot with that, but. The most important thing is that the capacity is there. We will get to you. And we've we've backed up the capacity by extending the Riverside, by extending there's additional services at, at West White this weekend as well. The bus is there for four days this weekend. It'll be back for at least four days next week. Um, so we're putting in the capacity. We should be we should be all right. People can walk in. I would urge them though, and this is going out in the messages. If you go and get a walk, if you go and get a walk in appointment at our, one of these services, but you've booked an appointment as well at the Riverside, I implore people to cancel them because otherwise we've got lost opportunity for someone else. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Okay, we definitely need to get that out, Wendy, in the comms um, that the bus is back again next week. I didn't realise that. Um, we need to get that in comms and we definitely need to know uh, to tell people to, you know, to be patient. We will get round to everybody and to cancel pre-existing appointments. Uh, Councillor Ian, sorry, um, Councillor Ian Stevens and Simon. I've heard that um, initially it was uh, you could get a booster after three months. And now we're looking or now we're looking at six months. What is the limit? No, other no. other way round. Okay, well, well, I'm way out. Of, I'm way out of limit. Don't worry. You know, I mean, uh, I've got an appointment next Tuesday. One wonders whether I should be turning up or not, because I was one. Of, I was one in, in one of the earlier cases of having a vaccination. But uh, trying to trying to get a vaccination over over the last few months has been quite quite difficult. Shall I come on some of the science, which might, might help? So you're, you're absolutely right. The science on this is that you have to remember it's a brand new virus we've been dealing with and the way the vaccination programme has worked has been really challenging. So you're absolutely right. You know, we do see it changing and I know that's really complicated to um, kind of communicate. We do know that, you know, everyone should take a booster if they're offered it because that we know once you've got the booster, you're 93% immune from the virus. So that's really, really positive news and that's really good. And uh, leader, on your point around the bus, what we're doing, we're, my, my team's working really closely with Jane's team to make sure that we can be flexed and look at where we need it almost week by week, which is why it does change. And we need to look at that resource across a bit of a wider system. So uh, it is unfortunate sometimes, I'm afraid people don't get briefed quickly, but we try and get it to be flexible and work with our communities. OK, I think as soon as it as soon as you know where it's going to be and when, if you can let local councillors know, which can then dissipate to, to the local town and parishes, it gets the message out there. Because my concern is, I mean, I know that I've had a nightmare trying to I'm over six months. It'll be seven months by the time I get mine. So um, but but my doctor's surgery did in the end contact us. Um, Councillor Stevens. On that uh, very point, uh, leader, I'm concerned if I go for a booster, Will that still be effective or as effective as if I'd gone within the three months period? Yes. Thank you. The answer to that was yes. Right, Carl wants to come. Councillor Love. Yes, thank you. So just just for clarity then in, in the message, people, um, so although the bus is in West White, people from out of West White can travel to use it as long and if they have booked an appointment elsewhere they must cancel that that's what we would want them to do and um and the other thing is 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 that is that is that generally speaking we've been asking people not to call their doctors and gps um because of the pressure which they're currently at currently under so as to wait for that and what I've been saying, rightly or wrongly, which you can slap me on the wrists of, is that if you get a message from the National NHS text service or a letter that you should not accept an appointment on the mainland, uh, stay local. Um, if there's no appointment, if you use that system and there's no local appointments, stay local and wait for your 
GP to contact you or if you can go and use the bus, do so. Have I got that message right, just for clarity? So just about the location of the bus, we're moving the bus to improve access. Yeah. A couple of places in Sandown, Freshwater and Ventnor. So we moved the bus around, but that's been on the advice. As Simon said, we're all working really closely together to share information about accessibility and access. So we are moving it and we will look again next week as soon as the um the the team have, have have worked out what their workforce is we will commence again again in targeted areas alongside your it, local, with local authorities so can i just clarify that once again just so so that so but if somebody let's just say from east cows decides to go up to freshwater this weekend they can they can get a vaccination Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Okay. i mean yeah okay that's okay okay um when did you want to come back in Thank you, Chair. It was just a final, so, sorry, just a final point of clarification. Uh, just to be absolutely explicit about the bus, it is aimed at those people who are 40 plus and eligible for their vaccination, is my understanding. Can we just be absolutely clear about that? Yeah. Wendy, sorry, shall I, sorry, shall I take that? <laughs> yes, it yes, is. We... <laughs> I'm sorry, um, forgot my protocol. I, um, Wendy, it is because we wanted to just focus on your boosters and getting your boosters going because we have this concertina of, of the window um, and so that's where we're trying to focus it if somebody turns up and they haven't had their first dose i don't expect they'll be turned away but we're not going to you know if, if they're over 40 and they you know and they're in the right cohort i don't think they will be turned away but it's aimed absolutely at boosters for 40 pluses because that's what we've got the protocols in place for etc but we're not going to turn someone away you know if for that but i don't want all the children turning up the kids turning up to be honest <laughs> it's really important that we get our most vulnerable cohort done first we'll be back to do all the younger co our younger age groups later so so the message really is about uh, making sure as in the first uh, cases that the most vulnerable and that is the 40 plus and, and we will be working on a separate children's program for the vaccine um, and we will keep uh, people posted. OK. A reporter that we have here because um, she's she's copiously trying to trying to make sense of everything we're saying. So, um, OK, uh, if there's no other questions um, or clarification, I think we're done. OK, well, thank you, Jane, very much. OK, um, there are any points of clarification. Please come back to me so that we get the right messages out. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's absolutely superb. Thank you to all your staff um, and everybody else that, that is running around trying to keep our country um, on its feet. We are extraordinarily grateful. A sincere and personal thank you from me. Um, Wendy, go off and um, have a lie down. Uh, uh, Councillor Love, we'll see you here soon because we need you back. Um, and everybody... Stay safe and get your boosters. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.